Welcome back to this Let's Play of the original official campaign, the uh, Ook of uh, Neverwinter Nights 2. Last time we met up with this dwarf who is picking fights outside and in, and we decided to help him out. In fact, there's no way to decide not to help him out, which is a dead sort of giveaway that this is, yeah, this is one of the companions we're going to have in the game. Uh, the way this game recruits your characters is a little heavy-handed, um, and the sort of why you get along with them, well, you have to make up your own reasons, because the game doesn't give you an option. At any rate, this dwarf apparently thinks that, uh, well, he's training to be a monk by getting into bar fights. Um, well, as it happens, I didn't always want to become a monk. What happened was that the find it. Well, look at this. Our next round of practice just arrived. All right. Well, I guess we're going to have to cut short on the uh, silliness here and uh, actually do some fighting. Thank God. I was getting kind of annoyed at Kelgar, actually. Um, he does join your party, at least temporarily for now. So let's open up with some attack spells. Uh, unfortunately, he actually killed them both with Great Cleave before I even had a chance to uh, use the spell. No, we'll cast Ghostly Visage. I may actually take a fair use amount of use for uh, Ghostly Visage because it is essentially a close combat type spell. Oh, that's the other quirk to uh, Kelgar. He shows up, but he doesn't actually bother to equip his weapon. And now he's blind. Great. It's actually too bad I didn't memorize Dispel, but... Oh. Well, that was fun. Anyway, um, we'll take care of the, uh, now, more or less, you can gain influence with companions. I don't, I don't know, more or less. You can gain influence with companions, uh, and you just do it by saying things that they agree with. And picking fights is essentially the, the way to gain influence with Kelgar. There's actually one case, which I'm probably not going to be able to take advantage of, where you fail to pick a fight with somebody, and that actually gets you influence with him. Uh, but it requires diplomacy, and I don't... <laughs> I have a charisma of six, and I have a little bit of skill in Intimidate, but not a whole lot. Now, or, you know, there are people in risk, at risk upstairs, but let's rest for eight hours and uh, get some new spells, and I'll be right back. All right, eight hours later. Well, let's hope somebody's still alive up there. Yeah, no, the game doesn't really take into account any uh, sort of time spent. And, uh, it's sort of amusing that you can rest in some areas. But yeah, it looks like nothing's nothing much has happened, so uh, I'm gonna get back to work on the spells I haven't cast yet. Oh, hey, hey, no becoming large. No enlarged person for you. And... Here. They're not the darkness, but I can still attack them with magic missile. Which I'm not very useful. I get... Well, I guess... I, no, actually, I didn't kill it. Hmm. Now let's find one of these ones that's not injured. Cast Ray of Enfeeblement. Ray of Enfeeblement is actually a very useful spell later on in the game. It's This is not the place to really sort of take advantage of it. It... Uh, the, the perk of it is that it essentially has no saving throw and is very hard to resist, which makes it uh, ideal for fighting sort of boss-type monsters. Oh, great. The only one who got caught in the web is me. And I don't actually have any uh, tax spells left. Well, that, that didn't work out so well. Here's one of the guys we're trying to save. Over here is Zakan, the Forever Man. Oh wait, no, it was Chakan. Well, yeah, close enough, right? Yeah. 
Now these bladelings are... I'm not sure if they're demons or devils. I can never keep them straight. I wouldn't do too well in the Blood War, I guess. Um, but the reason why they have damage absorption is that I'm using the wrong... Um, not elemental of weapon, but uh, the wrong uh, material of weapon. Normal steel weapons don't affect them very well. Uh, instead of absolute immunity, which is the way it worked under... Uh, second edition rules. Under third edition rules, it just you know it just absorbs some of the damage. So all right. Here's the other guy we're saving. This is the merchant. If you played through the prologue, you would recognize him as just a random merchant who was in West Harbor. You, he was the the merchant tutorial. And you can. You know, You can demand a reward from him, but I'm not going to. I'm too much of a goody two-shoes. Though I guess the character I'm playing is technically true neutral. But There's just some random items lying around here. I'll clean them up later. Uh, I'm actually going to come back here uh, later with a thief to pick the locks instead of, to, instead of breaking things. Um, so... And again, you can try and browbeat a reward out of this guy, and it, you know, you actually don't get anything much. I mean, you get a couple gold at best. So I'm going to clean up and uh, meet you downstairs. Now, I'm not actually going to hand in the quest of rescue my husband. You know, at least they got the genders reversed for variety. Um, just because I want a reminder to come back here when I'm done with, well, essentially once I have a thief in the party. But uh, I will buy one thing from this guy. Um, all these helmets are exactly the same. They give a bonus of plus one to concentration skill. Not real important, but for two gold, what's the... Why not? Uh, there's no point in giving Kelgar a helmet, unless it's got some magical properties, because, well, he doesn't cast spells, and concentration is otherwise used. I mean, I think it's used to re uh, resist the taunt skill, but I don't think there are any enemies that use it. Let's get it back on the road, and back out to the map. Well now, I've had a good time so far, and the way you attract trouble. I haven't had this much fun since that tavern back at Bogan's Pass where I was using that trestle table as a battering ram. Oh, look, we're heading in the same direction, and you seem to have more enemies than friends. What say we travel together? Might be able to teach each other a few things. Alright, now where's the option that says no? Oh yeah, here. I'm not keen on traveling with an insane dwarf. Insane? Ha! <laughs> Maybe one too many blows to the head, but I've toughened up since then. But let me prove it to you. So what do you say? Uh, where's no? Um... There's yes. There's... Sir, there, there's... Yes, that's logical. Yes, uh, don't get out of my way. Uh, yes, and get out of my way. But there's no no. Come on, where's the no option? I don't want this stupid dwarf. Oh, fine. Good. I'd be glad for the company and the conversation. And don't you worry about me keeping up. Kelgar Iron Fist carries his own weight. I won't be slowing you down. Right. Now, uh, the reason I kept a great sword earlier was so yeah. that Kelgar could use it. Um, it's a two-handed weapon. And, obviously, he's got both power attack. I mean, he's essentially a direct replacement with Cleave and Great Cleave and power attack and all that for uh, Bevel. Except he's just better than Bevel. So, to a certain extent, I guess I shouldn't, you know, cast him aside too lightly. He's just an idiot. And, you know, he's kind of annoying. Yeah. And I think they were trying to make him funny, you know, with his whole I don't understand what monks do thing. But, yeah, no, he just comes across as an idiot. Let's uh, get on the road and see if we can attract a couple more idiots in our party. There, there's a basic party you'll get of four people fairly quickly. And uh, it's worth... Experience isn't split among your party members, so it's worth sort of you know, going out of your way to rec you know, get the recruiting done first. But Our next stop, Fort Lock, where we will pick up the third party member. There's also a swamp cave we can go to. I'm not going to go there just yet. I'm going to recruit all my party members first. 
So, on to Fort Locke. But we don't have time to explore Fort Locke in this episode. Next time, we'll go pick up our third party member, who's also an idiot. Though, she's just kind of stupid, actually. She's not as much of an idiot as Kalgar is. Next time, Nishka. See you then.